Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. So we had started with the chapter electricity. Okay, so in chapter electricity, we were studying about the electric charges. We had seen that there are two types of charges, which we call either as a negative charge or we denote them as a positive charge. So the two charges, they are denoted as, as a negative and positive charges. The positive charges are assumed to be carried by the protons and the negative charges, they are assumed to be carried by the electrons. Okay. So the charge... We had seen an important concept which we also call as quantization of charge. See, in the last class, we had seen a quantization of charge property. The name I had, I didn't tell you in the last class. I didn't tell quantization word, but the properties which we studied were the same. So let's see what we mean when I say quantization of charge. Quantization of charges. So, quantization means something which occurs as a discrete multiple. It occurs in discrete number. So, just like we know that a substance cannot be broken beyond protons and electrons, in the same way we know a charge cannot be broken down to be less than an electron. Okay. The smallest charge that we have, if we ever think of the smallest charge, so the smallest charge that is possible is smallest charge is charge on one charge on an electron or a proton. So charge on electron or proton that is the smallest charge. Both the natures are opposite, but they are the smallest charges, and the value of this charge is. 1.6 multiplied 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. The unit for charge is taken as coulomb. So this amount of charge is very small. We had seen that this quantity of charge is very small. So we had also done a formula called Q equals to Ne. So with this formula, we, we were able to find out the number of electrons which will be required to have a charge of 1 coulomb. Suppose I want a charge of 1 coulomb. So what should be the number of charges that are required? Or number of electrons which, which are required. So we had seen that the number of electrons which are required is 6.25 multiplied 10 to the power 18 electrons. So this is a very high number of electrons. Billions and billions of electrons are required to have a charge of 1 coulomb. Got it. So you can say that one coulomb is a big charge and you can also say that charge on an electron is very small. It's very, very small. About 1.6 multiplied 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb is the charge on one electron. Okay. So this property where we calculate the charge Q equals to Ne, this is the property which we also called as quantization of charge. That means the charges, they occur as discrete multiples of electrons. You cannot break down the charge of an electron. You can't say that the, whatever charge is there on one electron, it will be broken down into two parts or three parts. It can't be broken down further. Okay. However, some of the scientists, they are trying to give you, they are trying to give, uh, explain that yes, charges can be broken, but that is uh, still under the process of studies. Got it? So, and also there is no model which explains that. So here we have Q equals to any and represents the number of electrons. E represents the charge on it. Now the next property that we are going to do is conservation of charges. Conservation of charge. Conservation of charge means charges are conserved. Charges can neither be created nor be destroyed. You can't create a charge and you can't destroy a charge. That is what we mean by the conservation principle. 
So the conservation principle is followed by the charges. So charges can neither be created nor be destroyed. So you can't create a charge and you can't destroy a charge. This property is called a conservation of charges. So if we observe in our some life, a life example, so we have seen that some of the charges, they get destroyed. For example, we have seen that suppose if you have a uh, if you have a ball that has some charge, say you have a ball, let's say it has a charge of plus 10. And now if you add some amount of electrons, if you add 10 electrons to it, so it will get neutralized and the charges of this will get destroyed and the net charge it will have is zero. It will have zero charge. Got it? Everyone understands that if you have a substance for example, we have seen for the chemistry also we have seen that suppose if you have a sodium Na plus and if this Na plus accept one electron, so it becomes Na with a charge of zero. So how is it possible? When we say that charges are conserved, so how can the charges disappear? Can anyone explain how can the charges disappear? So only the net charge is zero, but there is still charge in it. Yes, only the net charge is, charge is the zero. That means sodium is still having those positive and negative charges. The only thing is that the total charge on sodium has become zero. Okay, Since net charge on sodium has become zero, that's the only thing that has happened. So conservation of charges will be followed here. Okay? And the charge distribution will take place till the charges on both the sides become zero. So I think everyone uh, has understood the conservation of charge, which means the charges can neither be created nor be destroyed. Okay. Now let us see the movement of charges. How can charges move from one place to another? This topic is again very important. It explains the quantity current. So movement of charges or transfer of charges. movement or transfer of charges. So movement or transfer of charges, it means the charges, they move, they can move from one place to another or they can be transferred from one object to another object. So during their movement or transfer, how can the charges be moved? So, charges can be moved when some force on them act. When some force acts on them. For example, suppose if you have a negative charge over here. You have certain negative charge. And I want to move these negative charges. So, what is the way that by which I can move these charges? So, there are different ways. Either I can place a positive charge near it. Or I can place a negative charge on the other side. So, if I place a negative charge on the other side. So all these electrons, they will up, they will experience a negatively charged force of repulsion from this and they will get moved away from it. Or if you have a positive charge over here, so the electrons will get attracted towards the positive charge. So movement or transfer of charges can take place when there are, when there is a force of attraction or a repulsion. Okay. Now we will see uh, when the charges are transferred, what effects are created. So the stronger the charge, the stronger will be its space around it. Okay. So with this, we have seen quantization, we have seen conservation, and now we are at movement or transfer of charges. Movement or transfer of charges, it is carried on till the potential of all the substances, potential of both the substances it becomes the same. Something like this. If both the substances are made up of the same material and uh, they have the same size. So if you have your plus 10 coulomb of charge and you bring them in contact with each other, let's say you join them with a wire. So what will happen if you join the two substances with wires? 
there only one of them has a charge and other other one does not have a charge so what will happen yes will the charges move from one object to the other object or not the charges will be moving from this object which is charged to the other object till the charges on both of them become equal. So here the charge will become plus 5 coulomb and the same charge plus 5 coulomb will be there on the second one. So this will also have a charge of plus 5 coulomb. So both the substances, they will have a charge of plus 5 and plus 5 coulomb. Both the substances, they will have same amount of charge. The charge transfer takes place. So the charges, they are being transferred through a wire. Now why we are using a wire? Why we are using a wire over here? Aryan? Sir, uh, electrons yes. will pass easily no, sir, through that. Yeah. Wire is a conductor. So through conductor, electrons pass easily. Conductors offer an easy path to the transfer of electrons. Okay. Now we'll see. Whatever we have observed up to now, these was these were all static electricity. We were uh, talking of them as static electricity or charges which we which were stationary over there. When the same charges, when these charge when these charges jump through air, they cause sparking. So this is all about the stationary air. Now let us see the next term that is electric potential. This term we need to understand. And this term defines or uh, this term tells the direction of movement of the electrons or the protons. So we have electric potential. So elect what is electric potential? It is see, the amount of work done in moving in moving a charge of one coulomb from infinity or in moving a charge one coulomb from infinity to a point. So let's see how we are moving the charges and how we are going to do a work over here in moving the charges. So consider here you have a positive charge. Let's place a positive charge over here. So we have placed a positive charge here. And so now all the space around it, it has become electrified. Now this is not a simple space around it. The space has become electrified as this space will create an effect on the surroundings. So suppose if you have a positive charge over here at very far off, I have a positive small charge which is very far off from it. So the substances which are very far off, we call them as to be infinite. For example, your distance from me is not infinite. But if I look up, it's not possible for me to just go to you by walking. So for me, it's an infinite distance. Okay. So similarly, this charge is located at some infinite distance from this positive charge. Now, since everywhere around this charge is a space where we have some effect, if I want to move this charge from this position to another position, now I want to move this charge from the same position to somewhere uh, here, from this position, I want this to move from this position to here. So as the charge start moving towards this charge to, or towards this point, so there will be some amount of force which will be required and it will be constantly pushed by this positive charge. So this positive charge will be pushing this charge away from it. Every time it will be, it will keep on pushing it away. So, which force is there between this positive charge and this positive charge? Yeah. 
Yes, what is the name of the force which is there between them? Sir, electrostatic? Yeah, there will be an electrostatic force of repulsion between the between the two charges. The two charges will repel each other with the electrostatic forces of repulsion. So this charge, the small, the smaller charge, it will be constantly pushed away. Now to keep it moving towards this charge, I need to put some effort. Yes. Do I need to put some effort towards the center of the uh, towards this charge? Here I must apply some external force. See, I am applying some external force in moving this charge from infinity to this point. Okay. So when I am applying some external force and it is making some displacement from infinity to this point. So F external multiplied by the displacement will be, if I multiply this, will I get the work done? The work that I have done or the effort that I have put in carrying the smaller charge from infinity to this point. Yes or no? What happened to all the students of class 10? Are they here or not? Sir, could you once again yes, repeat sir. the question? Yes, sir. So be present and show your presence also. See, I have kept my camera on because here my laptop will may go off within 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So, and we are having power issues from late, uh, from early morning on. So that's the reason. I'm just uh, trying to do whatever maximum can be done in these time. So here we are doing some work. Can I say that we are doing some work or we are putting in some effort in moving the charge from infinity to this point A near the charge? Yes. Yes. So that work done will be given by the external force multiplied by the distance between them. Right. So I am doing some work. I am putting in some effort. So can I say that there is some potential energy stored in the charge when it comes to this point A? Yes? Yes. Sir. There will be some amount of energy stored in this charge when it comes to this point A. When released from this point, it will transfer back. It will be moved back. When it is released from the point A, it will go back. Just like the gravitational field. Just like we work with gravity. So just take an example of gravity now. So this is your earth's surface. And if you lift a ball from the earth's surface to a certain height. So I'm lifting a ball from earth's surface to a certain height. So which is the force which is stopping me from doing so? Yes, Aryan. Aryan? Yes, sir. Okay, which is the force that is stopping me from doing so? Sir, we want to say doing. Okay, which gravitational force stops me from doing can I say that the gravitational force of Earth stops me from taking this up? Yes, sir. I'm taking, I'm lifting a ball upward yeah. from the Earth's surface or I'm lifting any substance upward. Suppose if you are lifting a briefcase in the upward direction, so there is some force which is opposing your motion and you need to do your work against that force. So here we are doing the work against the gravitational force. The gravitational force is acting downward and we are doing a work against the gravitational force. So when I make the ball reach over here or reach the back over here, I have done some amount of work done and my work done will be equal to mgh. The work done will be equal to mgh over here, which we also call as the potential energy. This we have studied in class 9. 
that yes, if sir. we lift a substance to a certain height, we store potential energy in it. That's the reason because we are doing work. So our work done gets stored in the form of potential energy. So in the same way here also we have, when we are making this charge move from infinity to the point A, we are actually creating, we are, we are forcing this charge to move from this point to the point A. So when you force this charge to move from this point to the point A, so at this point, we are doing some work and our work done gets stored in this charge in the form of potential energy. So here, at this point A, the charge has some amount of potential energy which will be equal to the work done by us. Okay. Now this work done or potential energy per unit charge will be called as the electric potential as it will define or it will tell whether the charge will move in which direction, whether the charge will move or not, or if it moves, so in which direction does it move? For example, for the case of earth, if I'm lifting this ball upward, so once I release from here, the ball or the luggage will go down because unstable position is of lower potential energy. Always a low potential energy is stable. Got it? Yes, sir. So, the poten electric potential energy is the amount of work done in moving a charge from infinity to a point in an electric field. We define here the electric potential energy. Electric potential energy. So electric potential energy, it is the amount of work done in moving a charge from infinity to a point. Pranaya, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Prana, can you tell the similarities between the gravitational potential energy and electric potential energy? So, like, what am I supposed to say? The similarities between this electric potential energy and that? Yeah. Potential. Yes. Are they the same? Electric potential energy and gravitational potential energy. So, what similarities do they oh, oh. Is like there any similarity? Both field, I guess, which is like gravitational field and electric field. Okay. So, both of them, they are having some field. So, can I say they are similar to each other? Somewhat in like a way, not completely. Yeah, in, in a way, they are similar to each other. The electric potential energy and gravitational potential energy, both are energies and both are potential energies. Both will be measured in the quantity joule. Since energy has the unit joule, so electrostatic potential energy will also be measured in joule. Gravitational potential energy will also be measured in joule. Got it? Sir, electric potential energy and the, the potential energy we learned last year, are they like really the same? Uh, pardon? Like the last, last year we learned about potential energy. So, so are this and that really the same? Yeah, they are the same. The potential. Okay. The only thing here we are working against the electric field and over there we are working against the gravitational field. Here I am lifting this object against the gravitational field. Here I am moving this charge towards this charge again against the electrostatic field. Okay. 
So both in both the cases, we are gaining potential energies and potential energy will be measured in Joule. Okay. So in both the cases, it's the same thing. If you release the mass from here, it will go down. And if you release this positive charge from here, it will go away. Okay. So the electric potential energy and the gravitational potential energy, they are the same. They are both energies and they are both potential energies. We know that lower potential energy states, they are stable. And higher potential energy states, they are not stable. So all the objects, they move from a region of high potential energy to a region of low potential energy. For example, okay, let me, uh, first of all, you will try to answer my question. The questions are very simple. Okay. I think the first one, everyone can answer. I have here two beakers and one of them is kept a little bit high. The other one is kept a little bit low. So which one of them has a higher potential energy? The uh, container is kept higher. Okay. So this is our beaker A, this is our beaker B. So you say that container A, it has a higher potential energy. And yes, sir. this container B, yes. it has a low potential energy. So if I connect the two beakers with the pipe, so where should the water flow from? A to B or B to A? A to B. A to B? Yes. So the water will flow from A to B. So can I conclude that uh, water will flow from a region of high potential energy to a region of low potential energy? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay, so water will flow from a region of high potential energy to a region of low potential energy. Now let me make a little bit of change over here. And the question is still the same. Okay, my first question and second question, they will still remain the same. Now, I have again the same beaker. Okay, I have a beaker A over here. And here I have beaker B. But this beaker B is now white. So it can have a large amount of water. And beaker A has this much amount of water. Beaker B has this much amount of water in it. So at any time, the amount of water in this beaker B, this is our beaker B, beaker A. So this beaker B, it has more water than A. Beaker B, it has more water than A. Sir, could you unshow the previous page, sir? Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now, which of the two beakers has the higher potential energy? Let me also give you the values over here. So this beaker has mass of water to be equal to, let's say, 100 kilograms. And the height of, its height from the ground level is 10 meters. This beaker has a mass of 1000 kilogram and it is at a height of 5 meter. So which one has a higher potential energy? B. Sir, B. B? Yes. Everyone say now it's B? So yes. what will happen? What will happen to the water if I connect the two beakers now? Should it go from A to B or from B to A? A to B. A to B. A to B. So here is the rule not followed. Here you have high potential energy. Here you have low potential energy. So still you have okay. 
still you have water being flowing from a region of low potential energy to a region of high potential energy. Can anyone tell me the reason why? Sir, because gravitational force is like. But we were trying to relate it with energy. How it's related with energy? The gravitational force on both of them is same. See? And if you look for the gravitational force, this one is experiencing more gravitational force. As gravitational force is given by mg. G is same for both of them. Okay, this mass is higher, so this one is having a higher gravitational potential energy. Yes? Mm, just one minute. Now, to understand the concept lying behind it, we define here another, another term with gravitation. We define another term, which is not up to now we were uh, looking for potential energy. See, we were every time pronouncing potential energy and we were calling it as gravitational potential energy. So, we observed that the gravitational potential is high at this point and low at this point. Now, what is the factor that is controlling that from where to where the water will flow? Can anyone tell? The factor which determines where the water will flow? Gravity. Hmm? Gravity. Gravity is same. Sir, the height. Of... Potential of height. Okay, height is there. But the term we call now is gravitational potential we just call it gravitational potential not potential energy and we find out this gravitational potential as potential energy per unit mass so if we find out here potential energy per unit mass find out here also potential energy per unit mass you will find that potential energy per unit mass is higher at point A and lower at point B. So, always the water will flow from a region of high, pot high potential to a low potential. See, I am saying potential and not potential energy. The terms are different. Potential energy and potential, they are different. Got it? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, just like this, in the electricity also, here we have defined electric potential energy. So, electric potential energy and electric potential, which we are stating as see, electric potential, they are two different things. See the definitions also now. See the definition of electric potential. And also see the definition of electric potential energy. Both are different. It is the amount of work done in moving a chart of one coulomb. Whereas, this is just the amount of work done in moving a chart from infinity to a point. Here, it's not necessary to move a one coulomb charge. Just like, okay, Huria, you can pick up during the classes. Okay, so I think everyone has understood about potential and potential energy. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, bye, everyone. We'll see you again in next class. Okay. So, it was I've successfully completed the time. This is the laptop was about to die. So, anyways, bye, everyone. See you again in next class. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, sir. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And be attentive, everyone. Yes, sir.